Apple iMacs are usually not the best for gaming. Brand new, they cost a lot and have some decent specs, but usually they lack the GPU required for a good gaming experience. And let's also not forget to mention that the majority of games don't even work on Mac. Older Macs are usually even worse at gaming due to their outdated CPU and GPU, but there is one thing that makes them pretty appealing, and that is the price. You can pick these up online for next to nothing, and sometimes actually nothing. I found this iMac in the bin so it's completely free. It's definitely seen better days, but I'm not complaining as it cost me nothing. I have no idea what version this Mac is, if it can play games, or if it even works, but I'm going to try and save this from becoming e-waste. So here is our iMac early 2009 24 inch. It was left by the side of the bin so I assume the person who left it there wanted it to go to someone else. This iMac honestly weighs a ton so I can imagine why someone would throw this away rather than sell it on eBay with very high shipping fees. On the iMac itself we have a CD DVD drive on the side, which is pretty obsolete now but very important in 2009. On the back we have a headphone jack, an audio in port, 4 USB ports, a firewire, mini display ports and gigabit ethernet. The ports honestly still seem very usable in 2025, apart from USB 2.0 which is way too slow in my opinion. Luckily this Mac already had the power cable attached and included, so I can plug it in with a keyboard and a mouse and see if the iMac works. And so far so good, it boots into the macOS recovery which means that it's probably been reset or there's a problem. I first clicked on disk utility and we can see we have a 640GB hard drive. So I erased the disk and tried to reinstall macOS Mavericks which is the OS currently installed on here. And then I had the first problem which was I couldn't erase the disk. So I tried to reinstall macOS Mavericks anyway. And then I had the second problem which was to connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, that's pretty easy. Now we try again. While that starts installing, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, KeysFan. Microsoft Office and Windows Keys can cost a lot of money, but it doesn't have to be that way. KeysFan sells Windows 11, Windows 10 and Windows XP keys, in addition to Microsoft Office 2019, 2021 and Office 365 keys for great prices. They also have many bundles and computer tools for sale, and they even have Office keys for both Windows and Mac. I'll be using one of the Office for Mac keys on this iMac that I'm about to refurbish. You can use the coupon code GPU50 to get 50% off Windows keys and GPU62 to get 62% off Microsoft Office. It's very easy to purchase. You just click on the item you want, click add to cart, view your cart and add your coupon code GPU50 or GPU62. Then you can check out and pay with PayPal or a debit or credit card. In my case, I will add Office 2021 for Mac to my cart and add the coupon code GPU62. Now I check out with PayPal, saving me over $150. Thanks to KeysFan for sponsoring the video. So unfortunately, we now have another error after trying to install macOS. Basically it just says there's an error and to try running the application again, which I tried and obviously that didn't fix it. So rather than waste time trying to install an old OS on an old hard drive, I'm going to replace the hard drive with an SSD. And I was going to do this anyway, so might as well do it now and see if it fixes the issue. Here I have an Integral V-Series 480GB SATA 3 SSD, and it's backwards compatible with SATA 2, so it should work well in our iMac. Due to the location of the hard drive in the iMac, we have to more or less completely disassemble it to get to the hard drive. So let's disassemble it by first removing the RAM cover. It's pretty cool to see that we have replaceable RAM compared to the soldered RAM in the new iMac. After removing that cover, we can go ahead and remove the screen using suction cups. This is just held on with magnets so it's easy to remove and put back on. That then reveals the Torx T8 screws around the bezel which we have to remove and they seem to be of different sizes so don't forget where they go. And now we can remove the bezel but we have to be sure to unplug whatever this cable is for. Now we need to remove the screen by unplugging this cable with two Torx T6 screws, followed by a bunch of T8 screws around the screen. The screen just then comes off, but we do have to unplug the power cable and sensor before we can completely remove it. Finally, we can see the hard drive. We just need to unclip this plastic thing and take that off. And then we're going to remove the temperature sensor. We need to keep that and put it onto the new SSD. The hard drive then pulls out and you can unplug the SATA cables like any other drive. I'm then going to attach our SSD with tape because I'm too cheap to buy one of those adapters. I mean, it's an SSD anyway, so it's no moving parts, so it should be fine. I put the temperature sensor under the tape and we can start reassembling the iMac. Normally I would clean the dust out of here, but for the sake of not blowing someone else's dust into my house, I'm going to leave this as it is for now until I can do this outside. To assemble the iMac back together, we're just going to do the same thing but in reverse. Plugging in the cables under the screen is probably the hardest part.
before completely reassembling the device, I'm going to upgrade the RAM, which is really easy to do, and you can actually do this without taking the Mac apart. You just pull these black tabs and the old RAM comes out. We have two sticks of Micron 2GB 1066 MHz RAM currently installed, so I'm going to upgrade it to the maximum supported by this iMac, which is two 4GB sticks of the same speed for a total of 8GB of DDR3 laptop memory. We just need to put the RAM into the correct orientation and push those in, and then we can put the black tabs back in. Before putting the whole thing back together, I'll give it a quick test and it appears to be working okay with the question mark icon, because obviously there's nothing on the SSD currently. I'm going to finish reassembling the device, and then I'm going to clean it with a microfiber cloth and try to remove some of the marks and dirt with some IPA. So now we need to reinstall macOS. The choices are to either reinstall the latest OS that works on this iMac, which is El Capitan, but pretty much everything wouldn't work like Google Chrome because it's way too outdated. Instead, I'm going to use OpenCore Legacy Patcher to install macOS Big Sur. I chose this because I want the iMac to be not too slow, which could happen on the latest macOS versions, but also I need it to be new enough for things to actually run. But as it turns out, Big Sur is also a bit too old, as we'll see later. We'll go onto another Mac and download the OpenCore Legacy Patcher from their GitHub. Then we'll create a macOS installer. We're going to download macOS Big Sur and install that onto a USB stick. And don't forget to click settings and choose your Mac so you can build and install OpenCore to the USB stick. This is very important. Now you can plug that into the Mac and hold the Alt or Option key when booting up. And then we can choose the EFI boot, which will then allow you to install macOS Big Sur. Once we're at this screen, we're going to go to the disk utility and erase the disk. Then we can click install macOS Big Sur. Then we're going to choose our SSD and install Big Sur onto it. After what literally felt like an eternity, we could actually finally set up the Mac. After you get into the desktop, you need to make sure that the patches are applied, and you also need to build and install OpenCore to the SSD so we can actually remove our USB stick. We can now click about this Mac, and we can see we have a 24-inch early 2009 iMac. We have 8GB of DDR3 memory, and an NVIDIA GeForce 9400 with an Intel Core 2 Duo. In storage, we can see we have 480GB of SSD storage, and everything is working great. Except until we download Chrome. Turns out Big Sur is too old for Chrome to work. Additionally, Steam has also discontinued support as of yesterday at the time of recording. Of course, it literally happened the day before. So I've reinstalled macOS Monterey or Monterey or however you say it, using the same method as before and now Chrome and Steam are both working great. Of course, the Mac isn't the fastest, but honestly, it still is very usable and looks pretty decent as well. For everyday Office tasks like Microsoft Office, the Mac works great. Here I'm using an old version of Office for Mac from Keysfan and it works great in PowerPoint, Word and Excel. Watching YouTube videos in 1080p works well, but at 4K it does seem to struggle a bit, especially with 60fps videos. General web browsing is perfectly smooth and fine. But what about gaming? Well, I launched a Steam client and checked which games actually work with Mac, and I've got a fairly good selection. Euro Truck Simulator 2 is usually pretty easy to run, but here we were getting 1 FPS at 1920 by 1200 low settings, and I couldn't even move. This game launched fine, but was most definitely not playable. But that's better than 3D Mark, Planet Coaster, Tomb Raider 2013, and Rocket League, which all don't even start. Golf with your friend just about works with 3 FPS, but you know, at least it could be somewhat played. Human Fall Flat at very low settings, 1920 by 1200, is so far the best performance game at about 7 FPS. I could actually kind of play the game at these settings, but it's definitely not ideal. Overcooked 2 was also in this kind of playable category with 8 to 11 FPS at 1920 by 1200 at super low settings. Funnily enough, Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 said our OS was too new as 32-bit applications are no longer supported. Usually it's the other way around saying our Mac is too outdated. Strategy type games like Civilization 5 actually perform quite well. Here we have the game on the lowest settings, 1280 by 800, and we're getting like 25 FPS. This is pretty much the first game that is actually mostly playable. Very simple platform games like Super Meat Boy also work great at almost 60 FPS. I guess you just need to make sure the game is not too demanding or is fairly old for it to work on this iMac. Super Hot works on the iMac but only got about 5 FPS at the fast preset, which is definitely not great. And Terraria got 12 FPS at 1920 by 1200. I honestly thought that this game would have gotten a lot more frames than that, but I guess not. Surprisingly enough, The Witcher 2 actually works well, but unsurprisingly, we only get like 6 FPS, so it's not really playable. So overall, this iMac from the beginning of 2009 is not great for gaming, but I think that's to be expected. Even with our upgrades, the performance is being held back by the old CPU and GPU, but that's not to say it's useless. With OpenCore Legacy Patcher, this iMac can still be used in 2025 for Word documents, general web browsing, and very light gaming. The SSD really helps keep everything pretty fast, and the extra RAM should be okay for some fairly lightweight tasks. I don't think I'll be switching from my PC to this iMac anytime soon, but it's good to have as a backup or secondary computer. Of course, it's always 
good to save something from becoming e-waste. And if it wasn't for OpenCore Legacy Patcher, I think this iMac would pretty much be useless, as most programs, including web browsers, wouldn't even work. Altogether, this iMac cost me about £35 or $45. That's £10 for the RAM, £25 for the SSD, and of course the iMac was free. So I really can't complain too much for £35 or $45, as I have a fully working old iMac. Thanks for watching.